a lot of people are quite arrogant, I think. Mm. And when it gets to that level, it's like, well, I'm a superstar. <laughs> I don't need to spend my time taking a picture. Yeah. But you do. Mm. You do. Like, is that something that, is it, like you said, people around you that have kept you grounded? Do you think it's from from your past as a, as a young child? Like, yeah. do you think your parents instilled that from you from a young age to be humble? Like, where does where do you think it that, that level of grounding and that level of sort of care and attention uh, def- comes uh, from? Background, to be honest. Yeah. Um, especially coming from my mum and dad. Like, um, our mum was very... Um, she got mad. she would always get mad at my brother when he was a bit my my bung, a bit arrogant <laughs> about stuff. Like, no, I did not raise you that way. You gotta be, gotta be a bit more like down to earth and be a bit more like um, thankful for what you what you have. Yeah. Uh, our dad was the strict one, but yeah. you could understand why he was strict, especially as you get older. You're like now, I know what my dad meant by that. And but yeah, just I think it was just the family environment. Like as well, I had my brother as well to bounce off. I have had good friends like like you and to Delft to to talk about stuff with and. Um, it's just that that I say it's surround yourself by the good people. That's who you and that's who you about. Being honest, I know what people mean when you, you hear you see some people be a bit arrogant. But mm. I guess that's that's what they if they that's their group that if they probably hang around with if they are. Because yeah. I've always like 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 you want to if you're in a good environment you will that's what energy you'll you'll get and then you're that's what you're very influenced by. So. Yeah, that's why I really believe that if things are out of your control, the best thing you can do is just lead by example. Yeah, well, I remember your mom uh, fondly. Yeah, <laughs> she was always uh, she was very supportive. Very uh, coming over to games, tra- traveling before, yep. and I remember I had uh, you know, one one dinner with her first time probably like <laughs> 2008, and these waiters <laughs> in the restaurant in Iloilo, they were all uh, looking forward to serving her. Because she's like giving away 200 pesos tips. <laughs> Bribery. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why. That was the first encounter with your mom. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> now I know why uh, Phil and James are like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, our mom, she's, she's, I mean, it's like, like, it's like your mom, Chris, like that Filipino, like that, that tradition where they, their kids is all, is that's their life, their kids. And um, our mom, like, God, like, rest of herself, she just, uh, when we were younger, I mean, our sister was just born, and me and Phil were still in high school. And we couldn't drive yet, but our mum would drive us, like drive. She just learned to pass a test, but so she was quite scared, but she still did it. She'd pick us up every day from school and drive us straight to football training at Chelsea Football Club in London. So it was like an hour, hour and a half drive from where we were, and she did. It. And like obviously, London, it's very aggressive, especially on the roads. But that's how much she, she wanted us. Like she would do for us. She'd willing to sacrifice like the time and getting yelled at by other drive road rage people just to bring us to training and c- c- bring get us we, f- we were fortunate enough to get that education and she'd actually have she put spaghetti like microwavable spaghetti in the microwave before and have it prepared for us after school so we had some food before training a bit of carbo load and yeah so it's we were very fortunate to have that actually how was it for you growing up in in the uk obviously i, I want you to kind of paint the picture for what it was mm. like um for you growing up because so you grew up in Staines. Staines. Yeah, Staines your, bro- your brother is. Yeah, for, for those who don't know, Staines is is made famous by a, um, well, initially a television series, yep. um, Ali G in the house, and then, <laughs> and then subsequently the Staines film. Massive. Um, your brother obviously is 11 months? 11 months, 11 months younger than me. Younger exactly. than you. Same year at school. Same year exactly. at school. Exactly. And then, exactly. And then Kerry is... 14 years gap. 14 years gap. So yeah. obviously the, it was primarily the two of you with, with so your mum and dad. Yep. So close growing in up. age. Yeah. How, how was it for you growing up in Staines? It was great. It yeah. was great. Um, it was um, a bit young. I mean, I've always put myself, my mind to back when I was a young kid and what I thought about stuff. And I didn't know how big the world was then because you're in Staines, you're mm. st- in that town. And Staines, is, they have a quite well-known football team, Staines Town. And like that was th- that just that community of Staines where like people would play football. It's a nice area to grow up in. You have like parks. Um, you've had like... Uh, we would play football on the streets and stuff and I was quite fortunate enough I had my brother so we'd always play sports together we'd ride our bikes with our dad to the park and it was uh, by the river so you had mm-hmm. the bet you had it's like a nice place like you walk by the river you River have, Thames like, River Thames yeah. exactly so and then you'd have the um, you'd have like a, the local pub which is a hotel as well where we call it the pack horse and that's where every Sunday our family our dad's side would we'd always go there and he'd they'd have a pint together and catch up for the week mm. and 
and gossip <laughs> well and then me and phil we'd go off with our cousin who i'm not sure if you might have met him at the wedding mm -hmm. a tall guy yep. on our, the young husband table and then uh, so we'd go off sneak off with him lighting matches trying to light trees on fire because we didn't know <laughs> that wasn't good <laughs> but um like and then i remember phil now and then falling in the river thames when we played by the by the river and then that, that, that made its appearance in the in the no this was a different speech. one a different time, a different oh time. Gosh, it, phil's, okay. been, phil's been okay. in the river loads of times All actually right. i think i may have fallen in one time yeah, we yeah we're clumsy us me and Phil growing up and yeah it was it's really nice there and it's just right, it's that environment of growing up there and like um, it, it's a nice place to grow up in and uh, we were very fortunate and um, uh, just you have I said you have the river you have the the ten uh, the the parks to play football in and just that community of like that's that's what got uh, got us into sports when we were younger and who introduced you to football our dad yeah our dad. Um, uh, our dad signed us up with the local youth of um, Stainstown then, and like w which uh, uh, division was in? Uh, they were back then in the Ryman Premier, so that's maybe six tiers now. Yeah, on a bit the top. further down. Maybe yeah. a bit further down, but it was good. It was good. It's like then it's not about the money. It's not about the money. It's just playing the sport for what it is. And like uh, I said, I had my brother, so it was something we could do together. I tried all sports, um, like swimming. We did taekwondo. We did athletics. We did cr cricket. Cricket we didn't like because it's a lot of standing around. <laughs> and like uh, I think my brother, uh, like the balls are hard. We didn't like that. <laughs> but uh, swimming, I wasn't a fan of getting up at five a.m. and <laughs> like it was tiring. <laughs> it's tiring. Like it's just a rush in your head. You just look down and see the water the whole time. Um, what athletics? Yeah, it was, the, those were more individual sports, and that's why I respect these guys who do it. Like, because it that is that is really challenging those sports. But football, it was something me and Phil could do together. When you're on the team, and then you're play like you get a res you win together, mm -hmm. you lose together, and you you're in it together really. And that's why I think we really stuck with football. And obviously, football was really growing then with the Premier League, and it was something that was constantly on TV. Salamat po for watching across the line. If you want to catch the entire episode. You can check us out on YouTube and also you can download the episode on Spotify, Google Podcasts and an Apple Podcasts.